Hey there, how you doing? Uh, yai, is that how you say that? Uh, ya, 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 uh, ya, Mustafa. I, I hope I got that right. Uh, uh, can you hear me okay? Hey, Bruce, how you doing, man? Uh, hey, Turkey Vulture, is the sound okay? Hi, Tennessee. Hi, NS something. Sound all right, guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, turkey. Hey, Seth Morley, 1969. Okay, good. This sounds all right. Uh, hi, Smart, smart Sweet. <laughs> How you doing, man? Uh, Eddie, uh, let's see, Joe. Is it Joseph or Joe? Googs. Hi, Googs. Uh, anyhow. Uh, Let's see. Uh, now, what I wanted to talk about today is um, either. Okay, good. Hi, Lee. Um, Renee, oh, from Germany. Where in Germany, Renee? I was just there in April, or actually in May, I guess. Uh, hey, Simon. How you doing, man? I didn't think you'd, you could be able to make it. I'm glad you could. Cl uh, Clyde. Uh Waffle Waffle Day, okay. Happy Waffle Day, <laughs> I guess. Uh, let me see. Close to Lika City. Well, uh, well, sir. I was in um, two places: Nuremberg and uh, Dresden. Like them both. Hey, Art, how's it going, man? Anyway, um, okay. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, huh? <laughs> I love that movie. I really do. I'm a big uh, Tarantino fan. So, anyhow. 60 clicks north of uh, Frankfurt. Okay. Um, I think I know where that is. All right. Hey, Jan. How's it going, man? Um, all right. Uh, what I want to talk about today is coming up with... Three watches, uh, you, you're talking about somebody, especially a younger person, who is sort of thinking about, eh, maybe I want to collect watches. And the, the watches to recommend. Now, when I started, the only thing I knew, uh, I, I knew a few things, but I, I said, okay, I'm going to get the Holy Trinity. And so I got a Patek Philippe, uh, and then I got a... Um, a Vacheron Constant 10 overseas. And then I got a, what was it? The third one I got was Audemars Piguet with a moon face because I wanted a moon face. Well, yeah, it didn't work out so well. I ended up uh, trading both the uh, you know, number of watches in. That, of course, I lost money on doing that. But, you know, it, it, is that, that, well, maybe a better way to start off if you're a beginner is to start it was a whole different route. And so let me tell you what I came up with and why. Um, and I talked about three kinds of watches, um, an automatic, a hand wound, and, and then a chronograph. Well, those are pretty, pretty decent three watches. And um, so, hey, Andres. And, and so the, the three that I came up with, I came up with a Seiko 5, Oh, and then let me see what else I have. I have I wrote everything down, and then one of two watches, either uh, Tissot Heritage Petit Second or Seconde, I guess, or the uh, Steinhardt. Um, no, no, that that wasn't it. It was either yeah, bip, 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 bip. yeah, that was it. It was a um, no, yeah, Stein. Uh, the second one was either Tissot Heritage Petit Second. Or a Steinhardt Marine um, chronometer, uh, 44 Roman. All right, and th those are that was the second one uh, with the, um, the both of them have the same movement. And the other one was the Khaki Pilot Pioneer Stainless Steel Automatic car uh, Chronograph. All right, now let me explain why uh, those three watches. And, and again, I'm thinking of someone without 
you know, is not as foolish with their money as I am. <laughs> All right. So um, the the Seiko uh, when it came out, let me see, when it, 1963 Seiko Five came out in 1963, and it had five innovations. You know, rarely you know when we buy a watch, we don't get one innovation. But when the Seiko Five first came out, it had five. It had what was called a Diaflex uh, mainspring, which was an alternative to the, uh, the, this is an alternative to, I think, the one that ETA had. Uh, it had what's called a dia shock system, which was the, um, uh, an alternative to the standard shock system. It had automatic winding. It had a day-date indication. And it was water resistant. So apparently, uh, I, you know, back then they could call it waterproof. And if you call it waterproof today, you'd, you'd be met by a phalanx of, uh, of lawyers telling you that you, you can't say that unless something, something, something. Hi, geezer. Hey, Luke. Uh, Milton, how you doing, man? Uh, anyhow, the, those are, those are the three I picked. So let me start with the Seiko. Uh, first of all, the Seiko, you can get those for really good prices, the Seiko 5. And they come in a lot of different uh, varieties and so forth. And so, you know, here's someone, it, I, I think it's important to, it, for a beginning watch collector to start learning right off the bat why they got something, you know, what's new about this, what's interesting about this, um, what is the advantage of this? Most watches uh, that I have anyway, uh, someone says, well, you know, what's in it that's that special? Now, some of them I can rattle them off, but most of them are like, oh, I don't know. Um, what I have on now, this is my um, uh, Best Rowan Constant 10, East Reeks, 1921. Well, what's unique about this? Well, about the only thing, and well, beside the tilt in it, is the, uh, it was the first uh, watch that um, a Best Rowan Constant 10 had was sort of this new series of movements that they developed themselves. This one was particular one is a 4400. And the so, you know, so, so you know something about your watches. But if you're new to this, and you start off with a Seiko 5, and someone says, well, you know, what did you get a Seiko 5 for other than the price? You can say, hey, you know, when this thing first came out, this was a pioneer that did these things. Okay, so somebody who gets it is learning something. All right, <laughs> old habits die hard, I know. Okay, hey, crappy, hey, Jeffrey. Um, anyway, uh, flipping Zippo, how you doing, man? Uh, let's see. Okay, all right, so, all right, so this is, yes, uh, art. Uh, so remember the Seiko 5 5 things, <laughs> that's the way it goes. Um, Okay, so so that's a that that's a neat watch to have. In, in fact, it's one I want to get. So I can, you know, if it, if the same watch is around using some of the, you know, pretty much the same stuff since 1963 as a mechanical watch, that's another thing too. Now here was a mechanical watch that was pre quartz and you know in house. That's another thing too. It was the Seiko in house movement, which I thought was pretty cool. Hey, per simple, oh man, Ross Soneri <laughs> from Morocco. How you doing, man? Um, I'm gonna call you Per if that's okay. You got a you got an interesting name. Um, all right, so that was that was my first one. Okay, now uh, some other ones I I thought about uh, was the uh, Zenith Big Date Special. That was one I I looked at. And the, what I had in mind was, uh, well, that thing, it won one of the uh, early um, uh, Grand Prix d'Orologie de Genève. But then I said, well, no, that, it cost too much and so forth. The other one I thought of was uh, Mont Blanc uh, Star World Travel, another early um, uh, Grand Prix winner. And I, you know, passed on that. So this, so the next one that I thought about was this. Now, there's, there's a couple things with this one. Uh, the Tissot Heritage Petit Seconde, or second. I'll just call it, call it second. Tissot Heritage Petit Second. Now, what I like about this is actually three things. Uh, first of all, it's hand-wound, and I think that's, that's cool. Second of all, 
it is it has one of my favorite movements in it, which is an ETA you need is 6498. Okay, <clears throat> that's that's a pretty good size uh, movement. Now, one of the things you can do with that movement, um, even if you don't have a lot of background, if you're very careful, you can take a toothpick and tweak the uh, regulator a little to make it run faster or slower. And that's a, you know, it's, you've got this big, huge movement in there. The other thing is, is that it's 18,000 uh, vibrations per hour. In other words, it's the same frequency that all of the top watchmakers use. Uh, Kerry Boot and Lana and all of, well, it used to be all of the H Moser. Now H Moser, instead of doing two and a half, they have a lot of uh, three hertz movement. Uh, and all, uh, Roger Smith uh, uses it. Uh, uh, you know, anyway, so that's that was sort of a cool thing about that. That's what I like. And it's the 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 ETA you need is 6498-1. dash one. The dash two is uh, three hertz. So anyway, but that's what I like about it. The other thing is sort of a is sort of an odd thing that happened to this watch. When this watch was first announced, it was called the uh, Tissot Heritage Petite Second Anti Magnet. It's, anti-magnetic, all right? Well, it wasn't anti-magnetic. And uh, so <laughs> all of the reviewers said, well, it's not anti-magnetic. And it was, a, you know, they said, well, it's a heritage piece, so I guess it's okay. It doesn't have to be anti-magnetic. They just wanted to talk about it that way, which I thought was sort of funny. Well, what happened, and I don't know if they have any of these. I saw a couple of them with, they had underneath the, uh, uh, the name of the watch, it said, um, anti-magnetic, all right? Doesn't say that anymore. And man, I tell you, if I found one of those for sale, I'd, I'd snatch it up and talk about a rare watch. That was a mistake. That was cool things like that. And they don't cost much. Um, I found it to sell uh, for 630, okay? It's the same one. Now, the other one that has exactly the same movement in it is at the Steinhardt Marine Chronometer, 44 Roman. Okay, they have 44 Roman and 44 Arabic. Um, I don't particularly care for Roman numerals. I prefer Arabic. But in this case, for a marine chronometer, I thought, eh, that might be sort of a cool thing. So anyway, you can get either one, actually. Now, this one, uh, the one that... The, the, one of the reasons, okay, Steinhardt, you know, you get a bunch of people snorting at the Steinhardt. Well, it's honest, which is, I mean, in terms of like, okay, you know what you're getting, you know what you're paying for, and it's not very much. And one of the things I think that uh, new collectors outside of the uh, European Union, where they don't use the euro, uh, two things. Uh, one, they need to how to how to convert euro to dollars or pounds or whatever they're using uh, that just that's something a watch collector needs to do and be able to do it pretty quickly the other thing is is how to interpret a, those coming to the u.s if you're going to buy some buy something in the from the union uh you don't have to pay the vat which is a big chunk 19 percent and so what you do is you chop off 19 percent and then figure it out from that now, again, we're talking about a beginner, which I think would be good for him. This is why I chose these watches. All right. Now, the third one for the chrono, uh, chronograph um, was a Hamilton Khaki Pilot Pioneer Stainless Steel. All right. Now, I found that in Joma Shop, you know, and it was like eight ninety five. No, wait a minute. It wasn't in Joma Shop. Another place called Shop Worn. Now, they have an ETA 7753, which is based on an ETA 70, uh, well, which is based on a Valjuice 7750. Very good movement, uh, and it's used all over the place. All right, now, here you might say, well, you know, here you're having movements that are not, you know, in-house movement. That's true. Uh, they sort of are with Dassault and Steinhardt, not Steinhardt, but with Dassault and Hamilton because they're both owned by Swatch. And they're both using swatch own movements, but you know that's sort of a lame excuse, I suppose. Um, the, the big thing, though, well, Hamilton is not 
we'll say they're not bald face, uh, but they have they have a H designation for the movements, and you have to go to watch face and look it up, and you find out what it is. ETA seventy seven fifty three for the H thirty one movement, and then you find out the base is seventy seven fifty. Now, if a beginner has this, and you say, okay, now I'm going to get, I'm moving up. Hey, Sanford, how you doing, man? I, I'm, I said there's some people I didn't get a chance to greet. Uh, Wim, hey, Wim. <clears throat> how you guys? Okay, so th th this is the kind of thing. Now, if you add that up, that, that's under $2,000 for all three watches. And with three watches, you got the beginning of a collection. So, um now, so now what I want to do, how we doing on time? I got to be careful here so, so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> uh, let's see what ideas you have and, and importantly, why uh, you chose the ones that you did. Okay. So let's see. Uh, Nomos, art. Uh, Nomos is marketing to college grads, as you probably know. Uh, I had Nomos for a while. In fact, I was thinking, well, you know, the the what was it, the uh, club Nomos, and um, it has an alpha uh, movement, which is basically Nomos had been using um, ETA uh, seven thousand one, which is a Pazu seven thousand one hand wound. I really like that, and I generally like uh, Nomos. So, <clears throat> so Nomos um, is, is, a, is a good choice, I think. Um, but they're a little more expensive. I, mean, I was trying to get three of them under, under 2000 I mean, sometimes you can do that, but then you got you know, really bad watches. <laughs> okay, uh, so, but Nomos is, that was how come I passed on Nomos, even though I, it was, I, I think, a great one. Okay, let's see what else you got. Uh, what are you thinking here? Personally, I think that Nomos is a younger man's brand, but that's just me. Obviously, anyone can wear anything. Um, that, that's a reasonable thing, I think, uh, Bruce. Yeah, it's sort of for younger guys like me. <laughs> All right, uh, Andres, what's up? Uh, Seiko SKXX, so a uh, fly girl, or pointer date. You know, I love that Aura's pointer date. I think those might be going a little high, but I think those are good choices. Sanford, yeah, interesting view on Steinhardt. I know, you know, it's so easy to call it a name. I think those people go around, they call every watch that's not their watch some snotty name. Uh, the other day I put up a, a, a little uh, graphic on one of the uh, uh, pages, and it had a great big fish eating a crappy watch. And that crappy watch, the biggest fish was eating was a Patek Philippe. And a Patek Philippe was eating a crappy watch and it was a Rolex. I mean, you know, it's, you, you, it, everybody's watches, well, you know, you might as well get down to the plankton. You know, like they're eating Steinhardt's. But still, they have the same movement. Now, you look at the Steinhardt movement and then take a look at some of the movements that you find in IWC, uh, Cartier and a lot of these other ones for a lot more money. That's why I think a beginning uh, collector needs to learn this stuff. If they say, "Hey, I got a movement and, and so forth," whether they like it or not is 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 important, I think. But in order to like it, I think it has to be interesting. Okay, let's see what else you guys have. You can get Nomos watches with your air miles now in Europe. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, let's see. The Laco, yeah, the Laco has. I think the Laco's got. Does that have a a hand wound uh, 6498 in it, uh, Clyde, or 6497? I'm not sure to tell you the truth. Let's see what else you got. Um, okay, what are you guys talking about here? You have, <laughs> all right, let me see. Uh, what kind of, come on, let me see what you got. Nomos 774 is top choice, uh, classic looks. 
774. Uh, what is the name of it? I was looking at those things. I sort of know what a, what are they called? A campus camper. And then they have a taggle mat and they have an autobahn and they have some other things like that. And then each one of them had a number. I don't know what those numbers are. Um, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> Quite <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, beginners need uh, not fall into the classic trap, so they end up lusting after watches that they don't even like. Yes, I agree with it. The hobby should not make you miserable. No, that's exactly right. That good point. Um, uh, do I prefer Jorns with brass or RG movement? Well. Um, it doesn't matter, to tell you the truth. Uh, Geezer, one of the ironies about F.P. Jorn, uh, those with brass plates have gone through the ceiling uh, price-wise, okay? And I happen to have one. I just, you know, dumb luck on that, but, you know, it's not going anywhere. Nine bolts with that stowaway, uh, stowaway, stowaway, another way to get an ETA-based watch for the money. Stowaway. Mm. Okay. C. Big B. Only Nomos I like is World Timer. I like the Nomos wor World Timer too. But C. Big B. What we got to do here? We're, we're we're trying to find something under two thousand dollars so you can have an actual collection. Stowa. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you were thinking of it too. <laughs> the that uh, auto correct. They do terrible things. Hey, Forbin. How you doing, man? Uh, let's see. What else we got? Stoa. Yeah, that's that's uh, the Jorn identity. Oh man, God. The <laughs> puns, puns. Um, all right. So I mean, for beginners, uh, let me see. Okay, so Stoa Jorn is the center of the earth. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's right there. Um. It's too easy for the new collector to fall for a shiny new watch, especially if your YouTube guru is, is sprunky. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Bruce, have you gone off the rails? Hey, Jura. Jura, how you doing, man? Stoa, Nomos, uh, Oris. Yeah, yeah, all of those are good. The, he, here's the big thing that I was trying to do is that there's, a specific reason the um, uh, the Seiko Five for its innovations, the um, the Tissot and the Steinhardt for the sixty four ninety eight three uh, two and a half hertz uh, frequency, and then the Hamilton um, uh, chronograph uh, for the sort of the classic. Uh, base, which is a, a 7750 uh, in there. So, you know, and those are, you know, you, you, you got a, an automatic with a real history. You got a, a hand wound also with a great history to it. And then you have uh, a chronograph. Now, here's someone who buys these. They're under $2,000. Then he starts looking around. He goes to buy um uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll say a bright link. And so he starts snooping around watch space. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, they, they want $5,000 for this. It's a, it's a stainless steel watch. And it's got the same movement that I got in my uh, my Hamilton. <laughs> right? This is why I think, you know, starting off with something like that. On the other hand, uh, they do have the um, the original movement with all the innovations and the Seiko Five, and it's you know it's it, I I I think I would have probably I don't know <laughs> I would have probably wouldn't have spent as much money uh, that way. And a lot of and especially younger collectors, you know, they don't have a fortune, and then they can find out about these other ones as they as they go along. Three watches for under a dollar. Come on, Art, behave yourself. <laughs> All right, let me see. Uh, nine watches under 100. Get Saturday night special, a ski <laughs> All right. Hey, 
yeah, yeah. You know, they had that thing with those guys running into the, uh, they'd run into the stores and steal. Uh, they they re- were running into Apple stores. They caught them all. I mean, of all the places with security all over the place. Trouble with, uh, hey, Truth Fears, how you doing, man? And Mr. Teddy, uh, how you guys doing? The, um, the let's see, three watches for under 200. Orient, Bambino, Squally, Lion. no, not the Lion Shark. You don't want that. <laughs> People will give you too much trouble on that. And James McCabe. Yeah, but see, now, it's not just the amount of money you pay for it. It's that what that watch can do in terms of what you're collecting. Okay, how do you got a diver? Okay, for a diver, Hamilton Cocking, uh, Navi, that'd be a good one. Uh, all right, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Mr. Teddy 13, that's a good suggestion. If, if you want to have a diver in the collection, I had a chronograph um, because most people don't actually use their divers. They're, they're desk divers like I am. All right. Hey, Kaz, how you doing, man? Uh, let's see. Uh, Andres. Oris would be a neat choice. I agree on that. I agree on Oris. I, I've come to really like those. Um, the Oris I like, I think, is a little more expensive. Okay, Clyde, I'm, thanks for helping me out on the time. A Seagull 1963. Um, actually, the Seagull... I think it's an ST36 is there's the ST36 and then there's the ST3600. One of them is 6498. The other one's 6497. You can save a lot of money. And since I make watches and I, I think I break about <laughs> three movements for every watch that I complete. Okay. Let's see what you got. Uh, oh, Harbring 2. Maybe too plain for many, but interesting what? This is one I almost recommended the Harbring 2. Here you have a real handmade watch for an unbelievably great price. They, I've been noticing they've been creeping up, but that happened. Okay. You know, something happened to me, too. Um, I got to say this, and I don't want to get political. It's not political. It's just sort of some stupid stuff that politicians do. Um I got this watch. This is my regulator. And uh, it's really a cool watch. It's got these those screw-in uh, sides to it. And it's got a see-through in the back and so forth. And it's got a real seagull uh, movement made for regulators. And it was 200 bucks, OK? And uh, the, the thing of it was is that I thought, well, yeah, I'll tell you guys about it. So I went and looked it up. And now it's 220 because of that stupid tariff. <laughs> so I mean, it's like, oh man, there goes the whole regulator market right down the tube. Okay, uh, what else you got here? Hey, Paul, how's it going, man? Uh, a Mondine uh, with a loom on the underside of the hands. Ooh, loom on the underside of the hands. That would be interesting. Sort of gives it a glow. Uh, let's see, Persempe, Siegel, nineteen sixty-three, three hundred dollars. Ah, okay. Hand winding column wheel uh, chronograph. I'll be darned. Thanks, and thank you, Art, uh, for that. Air Toad, how you doing, man? Okay, you guys are uh, in in for the uh, Siegel, nineteen sixty-three. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, mechanics. Mechanicals are a bit steep, uh, new though. Yep. Hey, Wim, what's up? What do you think about the new uh, Rado Hyperchrome Captain Cook? Seems to be getting good reviews. Oh, man, I've got a, ra- a Rado. Um, as a matter of fact, it's a nice Rado. I've had it for years. A friend of mine gave it to me years ago. It's quartz. The problem with Rado, I found out too much about Rado. Rado has a policy. They were never going to make their own movement. Uh, and I think I'm trying to think what Rado has done. I think Rado was one of those companies that started using really different kinds of materials. They had one of the early uh, titanium uh, cases, and the one I have is titanium with a gold coating on it. 
and um, still works fine. And this is like, good grief, 35, 40 years ago that I got it. So, I mean, it works pretty well. Uh, but I I just, I mean, you, you pay too much, I think, if, if you're going to get that kind of movement. You can, you know, for the same price, you can get something like a, uh, a harboring too. Here with a hand, I mean, where else can you get a handmade watch like that? Uh, one of the ones we've been we've been uh, sort of been sending around is the um, uh, the Rolf Lang, and uh, you know you can really look at that movement. You can see there's you can see uh, the movement, the the kind of outlines and so forth aren't perfect, which which is a is a good sign that it's handmade. You get you know if you open up a Rolex or half a dozen of the other ones, everything is machine done. It's all perfect. It's all the same too. Yeah, you start dealing with these handmade things and you find all these little idiosyncrasies and that's sort of fun. Okay, let's see what else you got. Uh, and you got one yikes, uh, four o'clock. Okay, all right, Bruce, that means I turn into a pumpkin. Uh, I look like a pumpkin. Uh, I had a I had a day yesterday. I was on the way back and uh, this uh, was car decided it wanted to have more than one lane and uh it was either hit the car hit the curb and i had chose the curb and uh i spent my whole day getting had to get a new tire and a new wheel that is no fun <laughs> so anyway uh i i feel much better thanks for your input and thanks for coming too oh tomorrow yeah tomorrow is a couple things um I'm going to go into a little more introduction on this. They have a nice, uh, there's a nice collection. It's a very compact collection. I think you're going to like it. And then I got a, a couple sort of quote unboxings for you, as well as there was one, there was a page missing from uh, the last video. And I'm going to put that page in so everyone feels much better about it. Anyway, uh, take care, guys. And... Uh, and hope to see you tomorrow.